today is the 29th of July. Uh, of July. Uh, this is our th third day at the camp. Um, and my first video blog since being on the camp. Um, missed the last couple because I was pretty tired. Uh, so I guess I just wanted to talk really quickly about um, what I expected coming into the camp. And then and what I've come to see within the first three days. Um, it's been great. Uh, it's like being at a summer camp and we're just the camp counselors. We just get to play with the kids. We get to hang out with them, take them outside, go to the pool. Um, yesterday, since they were in trouble, they actually had to do a lot of uh, the cooking and cleaning themselves, which is fun. Um, but kids are kids. Japanese kids are awesome. Uh, and it's definitely been a lot of fun. Um, yesterday was kind of the most uh, real experience that we've had so far. We got to go to a, a meeting where there's a, a speaker who is a strong advocate, political advocate, for against uh, nuclear energy. Um, and he's actually from Fukushima, him and his wife are, and they've been doing uh, this whole campaign to, to just get people aware about the issue of nuclear energy. Um, just because so many people have been displaced, and, and their big goal is to kind of tell the stories of the people who've been evacuated out of that area, and then continue to tell the stories of the people who haven't been evacuated. Um, because I guess there's a whole political movement right now where the government is trying to get people to move back into these so-called safe zones when they're not actually very safe. Um, and so I kind of, kind of just back to the camp, the, the biggest thing that's clear to me is, is how important this space is for, especially for the parents, but also for the kids. Um, it really is stressful, uh, for the parents, I think to have to constantly worry about what they're feeding their kids, um, where their kids are, uh, what their kids are doing. Um, because cause obviously radiation is prevalent and, and they don't really know if they can trust what the government is saying about whether it's safe or not safe. Um, and so that really definitely came out in, in the conversation yesterday and then also just in the atmosphere of the campus is how special this place is because it, it gives the parents and the kids a moment to not have to think about that, um, which is really cool. Um, something that came out yesterday as well is is uh, this kind of struggle for the parents to to want to really keep their kids safe, um, but also want to stay home. So there's a lot of struggle, especially between I guess the father and the mother. It seems like where the dad doesn't really want to move even because they're, you know, they're in the safe zone. They're pretty far out, but the mom is like, well, there's all these other things that's saying, you know, it's bad for the kids. Um, you know, cancer rates are higher, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so there's definitely this, this, uh, dichotomy between, um, wanting to keep your kids safe, but then also wanting to let them be kids in their own homes. They don't want to take them away from all their friends and all that. Um, and there's, then there's also definitely feelings of anger, um, towards the government because there's definitely uh, this distrust. They just really don't trust them anymore. So, I mean, I think part of the Japanese culture is thinking in generations, thinking generations ahead. And, and it's just so surprising to me that that in this particular case that the government isn't thinking in that way, right? They're very much thinking in the short term. Um, so yeah, definitely something to think about in the future. That's all I got for today. Uh, probably do another one tomorrow or the next day. Hope this went well. Thank you.